Dom here from Essential RC. Thanks for tuning in for another flight test. Uh, this isn't a new product, it's an upgrade. It's an upgrade to the HEQ Swan K1 Pro uh, that we reviewed probably about a year ago now, if not a little bit longer. This is the upgrade, this is the Voyager. And the key difference as I see is you've got now got a three axis gimbal based camera here at the front, rather than the fixed forward facing camera that we had previously. It provides stabilization and it's controllable as well as you can see there with the two rollers on either side of the transmitter. That is providing, uh, it stores 4K 30 frames a second video to the onboard SD card and it transmits 1080p video to the display on the transmitter here or to the goggles if you go that route and I think that's you, you would definitely need those because if you're standing out in bright sunlight like, like late this afternoon you're not going to be able to see that display very well and this display on the transmitter can alternate between showing you the maps or showing you the FPV view that you're seeing through the camera it's up to you and you can alternate between them maximum flight time of this is one hour a lot longer than probably any other drone or fixed wing model because it, it, it combines the two. So you can take off vertically, you don't need a runway, you click a button, you can transition to normal flight and that is super efficient. So you get a long flight time, it's carrying quite a large battery. Then you can click, after you've done your recording of uh, your video, onboard aerial video, you click a button, you can return to home and it will land. So I said 4K 30 frames a second, the maximum range of the FPV is eight kilometers apparently um, as long as it's not obstructed by anything significant. Modular design as well the, whole, the idea with this is that it is very easy to use for a novice user you don't need drone flying experience to put this together and to operate it so the center section then you've got these two plastic pods with the motors you screw on the propellers and then you put the winglets on the on the side and you're done and then you, you plug in your battery at the location you would want to return to home. You turn on your transmitter and wait for it to acquire satellites, a minimum of seven satellites really, before you can take off. I think that's it. I think those, that's generally what this is all about. I'm anxious to try this for the first time, so let's take it out into the middle of the flying field and get it in the air and see how it flies. Okay, so here we go, full disclosure, this is not my first flight attempt. I'd been down to the flying field about five or six times. So this is about my sixth attempt. I've had several problems. I've had to go back to HEQ a few times to iron those out and resolve them to get to this point. And I will cover those later. But this is my first successful recorded flight attempt. So I've installed the battery into the Voyager out in the middle of the flying field. That's what it's going to know is its home location. I've okay, armed the motors off. by putting the left stick down and to the right and then put the throttle stick on the left up and it starts climbing away in hover mode. So some nice stable control in hover mode. It won't lock to position you have to correct for any uh, wind or, or uh, breeze and uh, so I'm, I'm climbing I'm climbing and I'm ready to click the button click the button and it goes into flight mode so a really stable transition on the FPV image but then as I'm flying out further out and making that first turn it flicks by itself back into hover mode now not quite sure why it did that there's very little wind very little turbulence there's only what i would describe as a light breeze on this particular day no more than maybe uh 10 miles an hour of wind you can see the windsock down there um and there i am um, down there as well so i've uh, confidence wise i i'm a i'm a bit cautious at this point because it went straight back into hover mode by itself and it was about 500 meters away so I didn't really know the at what attitude the Voyager was in and I'm flying line of sight so I opted to stay in hover mode and bring it back slowly over the flying field so that I can orient it back into wind and click on the button to go back into flight mode again which is what I'm doing here 
it's at this point really what I'm beginning to understand is that even with stick full over it makes very shallow turns except at this particular point it did make quite a tight turn there but it flicks back into hover mode all by itself so when you're flying line of sight and you see it do that it's quite disconcerting so I, I click the button again to go back into flight mode I could actually see the orientation of the Voyager and I'm off flying again it's uh, it's climbed quite a bit now I'm probably at about a couple of hundred feet but it's starting to go off to the right I don't want it to go behind the flight line so I'm making that turn to left again it it, it might look to be quite a tight turn on the FPV view here but it is quite a shallow turn and it gets gets away from you quite quickly it is moving quite quickly in the sky so I'm constantly turning to keep it in view so this was just an initial flight I really wanted to try out the degree of control I've got over it and how well the hover mode and the transition to flight mode worked and so twice at least I've had it flick out by itself into hover mode which I said is quite disconcerting you don't feel so you've got full control over it and the fact that the turns even with full stick over are quite shallow it has to travel quite a long way to make the 180 degree turn it's it makes me understand that this is very difficult to fly line of sight but that is what you want to do the first time that you have a drone really you want to check that all the controls work in the right way so you want to fly it line of sight and make sure it works before you fly FPV so that's what I'm doing here so I've done my quick test flight at this point and I've decided I'm landing lands in quite a controlled way I have to say slow rate of descent that's as fast as it will descend you hold the left stick down and it kills the motors so here I am back at base reflecting on that first flight it certainly wasn't a successful flight by my measure um, it flicked out a couple of times didn't it uh, when it was uh, flying around in flight mode into hover mode in an uncommanded way so that was quite disconcerting as I said the other disconcerting thing is that it had quite a wide arc of, of turn and, but I, I understand why that was. It doesn't have control surfaces, it doesn't have an elevator, ailerons or a rudder. It is solely relying on differential thrust between these four motors to achieve those changes in direction. So if you want to do a turn, for example, it will spin up the propellers faster on one side than the other and yaw around like that. And that's what I was um, trying to do. So, yeah, in terms of flight, uh, flight experience, uh, I think I've got a long way to go. This is the, the first, uh, first, that was the first successful kind of attempt to trying to get in the air and fly around, although disconcerting and a few things to do. But HEQ being very supportive throughout, I have to say, of the problems that I've had. I've been on several video calls with them. They're very keen to over, for me to overcome those problems and to see... Um, some successful flying and a successful demo of this. So this is just the first video. I have seen there are other videos of this out there that don't really sh show that. You know, they're showing it in a kind of very promotional marketing type way. I'm not about that. I think I might have been when I started my channel way back. But I really want to be transparent and show the, you show what you go through as a reviewer when you're with some of these things. And this has been the most challenging. Other things you just throw them up in the air and they, and they go and they fly, fly fine. But this certainly does have its challenges and it needs to be tweaked. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through what some of those problems were now. I'm gonna show you some advice and recommendations that I've got on how you set this up for your first flight attempt. Okay, so let's turn on the transmitter. We've got the power button and we click on that once and then hold it down to switch on. 
and then the Android operating system will go through its um, boot up. Then you're presented with four icons. The top two, HEQ Fly is the one we're going to use when we're flying. Q Ground Control is more for configuration. So let's start up HEQ Fly. You may notice when you start up, you're presented with a blue background, which can be a bit confusing. But the reality is that it's just very zoomed in on a different part of the world. So you need to pinch the view to find out where you are and then pan across to your home location. So here you can see the transmitter icon and I'm in the south of the UK. Before you fly, you need to do a couple of calibrations and those are accessible from the settings icon in the top right under that gear icon. There are parameters under flight, but we're going to go to control and you'll see you can calibrate the compass and calibrate airspeed. So the using the pitot tube on the Voyager. What we can also do at this point, if you haven't done it already, is pull down maps. So if you're in China, then you would probably use a map service, but we need to use Google if we're in UK and Europe and probably the US. So make sure that Google is selected. Uh, it's not going to pull down the maps without a, an internet connection via Wi-Fi. So what you do need to do is to spot, uh, to set up a hotspot on your smartphone. So do that under settings, connections, mobile hotspot and tethering and turn on mobile hotspot. And then you need to connect to that hotspot. So uh, drag over from the right and uh, access the network and internet settings under Android. Turn that on, connect to that hotspot on your smartphone and then it should start pulling down maps. Just to point out here that if I did have the Voyager plugged into its flight battery, you would see a separate icon for its location here when it had acquired GPS satellites. But what I'm going to show you next is how you access Q Ground Control app and get that working to change parameters. So swipe from the right, click on the square icon, second attempt to do that and that brings up all your open apps now you need to kill the HEQ fly app first you can't use that and Q ground control at the same time but you need to go into CE and set up the data link change that from UART to Bluetooth and then go backwards and kill that app and then go into Q ground control so I can't stress enough that you can only run one of these apps at a time. And then when this starts up, just close this dialog and it should connect and pull down parameters from the flight controller on the Voyager. Now, one of the first things that uh, we discovered after I tried to fly a couple of times was something quite fundamental and that's that the button on the transmitter for going between hover and flight modes and vice versa was not mapped to the correct channel. Don't ask me why but it, that's what we found out through a video support session with HEQ and we corrected that as well as a few other things in later flight attempts to enable tighter, tighter turns um, which I'm going to try in subsequent flights. But uh, Q Ground Control app is where you change the settings on that very clever flight controller that's inside the Voyager. And I'll probably go into what I have changed specifically in a later video. 
One more thing to share. So switching to FPV view on the transmitter from the map view, you can see there's no image from the FPV camera. So this happened after a, uh, a rough landing. And uh, I spoke to HEQ and they suggested that the cable from the camera to the flight controller disconnected. So after removing three screws, and if I zoom in, you can see that the that is the case. The plug is disconnected from the flight controller. So once you know that, very easy to push it back in place. But the lead is a bit short and even the camera moving around can move that cable and I worry could disconnect it. But once reconnected, plugged the battery back in, you can see I'm now getting the FPV view from that camera so we're all good again but I think I might have to use some hot glue or something to retain keep that plug in place on the flight controller okay so there we go that's my initial experience with the HEQ Voyager um, you know it's uh, it's quite unique uh, quite an original concept I think this H wing style of flying with its more efficient uh, flight mode, transitioning out of hover mode, it has a lot of benefits but I think I would need to fly it a few times and work together with HEQ to uh, work out the wrinkles but I am going to persist and uh, try and do that and share with you the, the flight experience. So thanks for watching uh, this on Essential RC, I uh, hope you'll, you've enjoyed our, our videos, if you do then please subscribe, click the bell icon for notifications but I'll be back soon. Uh, with more show coverage or reviews of things that we're, we're sent to try out for the first time. Thanks for watching. See you soon.